Hey, my name is John with Alpine Savvy. Something I've been curious about for a long time is the difference between diameters of accessory cord and increased strength. If you look at the manufacturer's rating, there's a big increase in strength going from six to seven millimeter cord. It's only one millimeter difference, but the strength rating jumps about six or seven kilonewtons. Today with Ryan at How Not To, we're here to check that out and find out why that's true. So the strength difference we're curious about is between the six and seven millimeter accessory cord, but we also got five and eight millimeter accessory cord, so we can compare how diameter changes the strength of this stuff. So what we have between five, six, seven, and eight is a 5.5, 5, 7.5, 13, and then 17. And you can see it's a 36% jump in strength, and then a 73% jump in strength and then a normal, normal 31% jump in strength. So when you're increasing just by one millimeter, your accessory cord, you're actually increasing the area you can fit in the nylon strands. Imagine a pipe here, you can fit an X amount of strands of nylon, and here you can fit a lot more strands of nylon with just a one millimeter jump. So even though it looks linear here, it's actually changing a lot here. Now, if you had a one millimeter accessory cord and you jump to two millimeter, that's a big jump. If you had a 20 millimeter rope and you went to 21 millimeter rope, it's not quite as big of a jump. So this is square millimeters for a five millimeter accessory cord. And to go from five to six is a 44% jump in the amount of space that you have to put the nylon cords. And then it's 36 and then a 30% jump in this amount of space you have. So technically the biggest jump we should see is here in strength, not here. And that's quite a big difference. Now. The question is, can they weave it different once you get to a certain size? Can you add more core versus sheath? Because you have to have a certain amount of sheath to protect the core. I don't know those answers, but I have a brake test machine and we're gonna shit test this basically. So we looked up Sterling's numbers and we see that you have a 69% jump in strength, then a 41% jump in strength, and then a 25% jump in strength. And that kind of makes sense with the surface area gradually getting smaller jumps. However, it doesn't line up with a 69% with only 44% more fill area that you can put in the nylon. And then 41 doesn't line up with 36 and 25 doesn't line up with 30. So I don't know any more than that. And I had Google calculate that for me. So if that's wrong, tell me why. Let's show you how we're gonna break test this stuff. So normally we test most things here with a figure eight on one side and a figure eight on the other. And that adds a lot of variation to the, the test because knots have a lot of different results that you can get. Welcome to the first time on How Not To, we are going to intentionally use diverters. We're gonna wrap this rope four times around this pipe and that should retain full strength in here. And we will hopefully actually get, for the first time on How Not To, the actual MBS of the rated rope. Because normally a rope's rated for, let's say eight kilonewtons, and you tie a knot in it, all of a sudden you're not getting eight, which is good to know if you're gonna tie knots in it. But because we're nerding out over some spec we saw online, we're gonna go scientific here. Hit that if you think that's cool. I want 5.5, give me 5.5. Wow, look how much it stretches. Come on, 5.5. Yeah! Wow! 6.5. I've never said on this channel before, wow, that rope broke stronger than I thought. That is impressively strong. Still a little higher than MBS. So it's clove hitched here in the back. And um, the idea is it's gonna break somewhere behind this bollard. So when I put slackline webbing in this web lock, it has a similar thing going on where it's a diverter. It's just not full size for full strength, it always breaks in the back of the web log. And that's what the rope is doing here. On our next sample, we're going to put a Sharpie mark to see how much it stretched and to see where it broke relative to where I put the Sharpie mark. Um, but this stuff is not just stretching the cord here, it's stretching all the material around, which is why these things spread out so far before it finally broke. Now there's not a lot of friction on this bollard, but it's enough to not have this clove hitch be the reason it breaks. It breaks around this thing, giving us obviously full strength. Let's do it again.
we're going to sharp your mic here on the drum and another mark right there so it broke in the back right here that's it's all stretched out but it was basically right here is when it broke so it broke on the first strand around the drum this is highly impressive and loud and still a little bit scary but i'm getting used to it Oh my God, that is so, so good. So MBS is a Sigma three calculation that you're gonna get 99.7% chance. It'll never be below this number. In the best case scenario, which is not very helpful because you tie knots in it. But when we are testing with a bollard that it's pretty cool that it is higher. Now for the true test, to see if this is 73% stronger. Wow, they're right. I've never seen that before. Imagine that. I do need to figure out a way to prevent that from falling. I'll probably just put a hanger in here and connect it to the side, because this is stationary. But what's neat, is this is an ASAP used by the rope access community and see it goes this way until you pull it and then it catches. And so that way this can extend with my rope ever so slowly uh, without affecting our number. And it's been working pretty good because this is free floating and a lot of times this is actually permanently attached to the actual piston. So um, yeah, this whole U-shaped brake test machine is Working great. We did a whole video on mussy hooks. You should check that out. <laughs> so ghetto. <laughs> Whoa! 99.7% chance it's going to break below what? Below 13? <laughs> I mean, it's freaking good enough. You jump! You almost hit your head on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's a full one and a half k in over MBS. Still over seventeen. What do you think about the inside of a rope? I'm wondering what the little red lines for. That I believe is a tracer to know that it's their rope or the size or the length. It's uh, information, I think. Okay. Good I could be wrong, and that'd be bad information. The best way to find out correct information on the internet is to post something wrong and wait for smart people to correct you. So we did get a bigger jump between six and seven millimeters. Which is consistent with the manufacturer's fix that we saw. But it wasn't as much because they said it was about a 73 percent jump and we got about a 55 percent jump that means we're just nerds but it is a much bigger jump than the um 34 and 37 percent jump between the other ones interesting how the diameter really changes the strength of things and if you tie knots in any of these or use them in any other way than big bollards then you're not going to get these numbers so please don't go repelling on a five millimeter accessory cord because you saw that it held, you know, 1,500 pounds of force or around six-ish kilonewtons. That's not how that works. So make sure you understand ropes before you push their limits. This was very nerdy niche thing we're testing. We are going to be testing six millimeter super cords with Brent Roth, who we did the canyon course with. And we're going to do a whole abrasion test, drop test, slow pull, fast pull, and three different friction devices. Because there are six millimeter ropes out there that you can actually repel on. And it seems really thin to do that when I touch the six mil. Have you ever repelled on a six mil? Um, only in training with like a Petzl rad line. It's pretty scary, depending on the device you use. Yeah, because if you don't have or feel like you have enough friction, it can feel like you're just death gripping the thing. But you don't always just use a normal ATC with a rope like that. Nope. So you're saying you have to know more than just watching a... Apparently so. <laughs> Those trained and skilled instructors are a really good place to learn that kind of stuff. Now, you have a lot of tips on your website. 
and you have an Instagram where you post all of that on there. You said you also did classes. I'm leading, organizing a series of classes through the Mazamas in Portland, Oregon, and anyone in the Portland area is welcome to go check those out at mazamas.org.